Attention, attention. We only have five spots left for our last live retreat of 2023. It takes place in the Red Rock Mountains of glorious Sedona, Arizona. And this is one of the most life-changing, transformative experiences that you could gift yourself with. We just finished up a wonderful action-packed plan stock weekend and people love to hear about the science and the food. Well, this is a week-long retreat that goes deep into the science and the food and the lifestyle with all of your favorite Brock stars. There's all kinds of activities, including pickleball, hiking, yoga, meditation, stargazing under the incredible Sedona sky. There's also endless buffets of gorgeous, delicious, plant strong food and a team of unparalleled support. You will go home with more tools to help you launch your plant-based life along with lifelong friendships than you ever imagined. Simply go to plantstrong.com and then click on Sedona Retreat 2023. And I hope to see five of you intrepid souls in just a few days. If you have any questions, just DM me at Rip Esselstyn on Instagram and I'll get right back to you and we'll jump on the phone. I'm Rip Esselstyn and welcome to the Plan Strong podcast. The mission at Plan Strong is to further the advancement of all things within the plant-based movement. We advocate for the scientifically proven benefits of plant-based living and envision a world that universally understands, promotes, and prescribes plants as a solution to empowering your health, enhancing your performance, restoring the environment, and becoming better guardians to the animals we share this planet with. We welcome you wherever you are on your Plan Strong journey, and I hope that you enjoy the show. I am pumped for today's episode of the Plan Strong podcast because it is a long, long overdue reunion of sorts. Let me start today's episode with two questions for you. If I go into small town America and I take a group of normal people who are suffering with typical health problems like heart disease, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and I show them exactly how to get rid of their problems by changing their diet for just a few weeks, will it work? And the second question is, when I do that, what will that group of people look like a dozen years later? Will what I have taught them, will it have stuck? Or was it just a temporary blip? Or will they be eating well and eating that way many years later? These are the questions that I pose at the beginning of my brand new film, Plan Strong Legacy, 12 Years of Wellness, that's available to view for free at planstrongmovie.com. So after the launch of my first book, The Engine 2 Diet, I was invited to a small town, Mercersburg, Pennsylvania, by a local physician there. Her name was Dr. Elizabeth George. And she was on a mission to help her town get more healthy. And so she invited me to speak at restaurants, churches, the local high school, bars, and even booked me on radio station interviews to get the town ready to take on my 28-day challenge. And man, were they in for a surprise when I showed up. I also decided to bring along a film crew to capture everything. And last year, this same crew followed up with Dr. Liz and some of these participants to see how they were doing 12 years later. And the result is this new film, Plan Strong Legacy, 12 Years of Wellness. And today, I bring you a wonderful, very overdue interview with Dr. Liz George and filmmaker Jeff Nelson as we celebrate the release of this movie and catch up on those days when we were driving around Mercersburg in the heart of dairy country talking about getting people to eat more plants. Enjoy. 
So we're gonna we're just gonna kind of have a free flowing conversation today. And before I introduce my guests, I want you to know that we just came out with this movie. It's called The Plan Strong Legacy: Twelve Years of Wellness, and ba it basically is what happens after the before and after. And these two people are the reason that this whole movie came to fruition and then came to life. And so I want to check in with these guys. We did this over 12 years ago, and I want to see how Dr. Liz George is doing. I want to catch up with Jeff Nelson, who's got an extraordinary career in the kind of the plant-based movement. And we're just going to let it kind of run its course. So for starters, Jeff, I want to start with you, Jeff. Will you let everybody know kind of a little bit about your, your pedigree and your background in the plant-based movement and how you truly were one of the first to start throwing, well, well, I'm kind of talking for you, but you had the first <laughs> website, you had the first events. I mean, you were really a pioneer. Well, it all it all started, I guess, in 1990 when I heard John Robbins on the radio. You know, John. Uh, <laughs> he um, he I, he was talking about his book and about uh, the relationship between food and health. And I stopped somewhere. I bought the book. I read the book, and it made a lot of sense to me. I had already been sort of a chickenitarian because I had a job uh, producing TV commercials and we'd have people from the advertising agency come up from New York and they were on vacation. So they wanted to go to Wolfgang Puck and they wanted to go, you know, to Morton's Steakhouse. They wanted to go have all this rich food and sacrilege. And so it was my <laughs> job to take them out. Everybody else like, no, no, no. So I, in my twenties, I was eating like a lot of rich food and I realized that this is not good. So I sort of left off red meat. So I read this book by John Robbins. I said, this makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go vegetarian. I gave it to my wife next. She wasn't my wife yet, but she read it, Sabrina. And uh, really the animal kind of argument was what impacted her. She'd had chickens as a kid and they were pets and they had names and personalities and they'd wait for her to come home from school before they'd lay their egg and uh, uh, so she always thought the, the chickens that she ate were different from the chickens who were her pets. But when she read John Robbins' book, she realized, no, they're really the same. They're just kind of terrorized and have terrible lives, the ones we eat. So she didn't want to be any part of that. And for that reason, she went vegetarian. About five years later, uh, her, she had an episode where her ears got red and started bubbling up, uh, looked like a really bad sunburn, quite painful. She bounced around to different doctors ended up in the office of a rheumatologist who diagnosed her with a thing called relapsing polychondritis. That's an autoimmune disease where your immune system attacks uh, the cartilage. You've got cartilage in your ears, your nose, your throat, mm. around your heart. And uh, so she had that for about a year. She kept having these relapses and she was on very serious medications, something like protease inhibitors, uh, steroids and so on. Someone had given her a book by a doctor named John McDougall that she let sit on the shelf for a year. And Ooh. she decided to read it at one point when she was having one of these relapses. And when she had these relapses, she basically just had to go to bed for a few days and could do nothing. And in the book, John talked about lupus and dairy and how dairy products can somehow be, sometimes be a trigger and eliminating them and so on. So she came downstairs and read this passage to me and, and Relapsing polychondritis is in the lupus family. So it was like, wait a sec, maybe we need to improve our diet. And she decided to try McDougal's diet, which is a vegan, a plant-based diet. And I said, well, I guess if you're going to do that, then, you know, I'll do that. Her next appointment was three, three weeks later with the rheumatologist. She had this monthly appointments. And for the first time in a year, her sed rate was normal. It had been above 50. Now it was below five. And the anti-nuclear antibodies, which is an indirect measure of how active the mm. disease is, were not present. So after three months of going back and getting those same results each month, the rheumatologist said, you're in remission and your cholesterol is 135. Your dietary strategy is working, is what he said. Huh. And, um, you know, she, she'd gone in when she first saw this guy and she said, no, I'm vegetarian. And he's like taking notes. He said, oh, vegan is best. This is what he had said to her. That kind of went in one ear and out the other because we didn't even kind of know what vegan was back in the 90s there. And um, afterwards, she, she was like, wow, I didn't, you know, this is great. I, 
my diet, um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't realize that this could work. And, and the doctor said, yeah, diet can have a profound effect, but most people, you know, they're not interested. They want a pill, they want something. And Sabrina was thinking, you know, my God, I would have eaten cardboard to get rid of that disease. You know, I'm, why you never told me. So anyhow, that was back 27 years ago. Wow. And we kind of haven't looked back since then. She's been well. And this is a this is a disease where it's got a mortality rate of like 50 percent in five years or something like that. It's a very serious disease, disfiguring and and the, the drugs that you have to take can be as bad as a disease. So we felt like we dodged a bullet. The Internet was kind of coming into being. It was around 95, 96. And we went on and looked around to see where's this information out there. And we didn't see a lot of it. We, there were vegan websites and so on. So we decided to make a website. And then we made a point of trying to meet and befriend as many different people in this, um, you know, segment who were trying to present the many good reasons for shifting towards a plant-based diet. And we ended up making making websites for people who weren't on the internet yet, like John McDougal, uh, like Farm Sanctuary, PCRM, all these people. We made their first websites for them and uh, had a server and all that. And that's kind of we we grew from there and I could go on and on, but that's kind of right. how it all well, I know you could, I know you could. And I just want to add a couple more things before we, uh, before we go to Liz and that is, but you, you started one of the first vegetarian, uh, websites, right? Right. Yep. Ve- yeah. There were, few, there were a few out there before us, but we, yeah. we started veg source and, uh, that was in 96, I guess. And that was right around the time, as I say, we were trying to help other people, who yeah. had books and who had followings get on the internet as well and try, we tried to make VegSource sort of the hub and all these spokes out to all these other places. So if you came to VegSource, then you could discover a lot of different doctors who were doing this or nutritionists or, um, you know, recipe chefs and animal yeah. rights and just all the whole full spectrum. And when did you start throwing your, your live events where you invited people like Furman and McDougal and Colin Campbell and my father? Yeah. Actually, in 2001, you know, we had a busy website and we thought, let's have a party. Let's have a party on a Friday night and see who shows up. So we put up a kind of a sign up sheet and we got this Buddhist restaurant, vegan restaurant. We were going to that had a room that could hold about 80 people. So we did a sign up. And within a week, we had like 120 people signed up, ended up to being a couple hundred people. So we moved it to a hotel and we decided let's and it was just going to be on a Friday night. So well, let's let's make it for more of the weekend. And we got. We invited McDougal and Howard Lyman and uh, yeah. Colin Campbell and all that, you know, as they say, your dad in the second year. And every year we just started uh, repeating this. It was actually a couple of weeks after 9-11, the first one. We thought we were going to have to cancel it. But I think we had only like one person cancel. Everybody else still showed up. And, well, and so that's that's when we started doing that. It's 2001. And I can remember my first time going. When, what was it called? Like, what was it called? Uh, it's called the Healthy Lifestyle Expo. Healthy Lifestyle Expo. I remember going in 2006. Yes. And I, I, was, I was like a kid in a candy shop <laughs> just looking at all these Brock stars that were there. I was just like so in heaven. I was, you know, I had actually just um, gotten an offer to write a book, you know, about the guys at, at Fire Station 2. Right. And then a couple of years later, you honored me by asking me to be one of the keynote speakers on the yes. Friday night kickoff in 2009. And it was, it was at that point in my life, it was one of the high points, you know, just so exciting for me. And I am so grateful for you for inviting me and the opportunity that you gave me and the confidence that then ensued after that. Wow, you were so, amazing. Yeah, so, you hit it out of the park. People were raving <laughs> for years after that. Yeah. So, all right, Dr. Liz, let's move on to you for a sec. So, <laughs> so like, I feel like I haven't seen you in years and years and years. You look absolutely incredible. And for, <laughs> and, and for people that don't know, when we did this film, The Plant Strong Legacy, uh, back in 2010, your hair was dark, like so was mine. We, we, and now we're both white. <laughs> and yeah, better looking than that ever. Eat plant based, is that right? <laughs> uh, but will you tell me, like, so 
I spoke at uh, Jeff's Healthy Lifestyle Expo in 2009. My first book, The Engine 2 Diet, had just come out in February of 2009. And then I get this phone call like <laughs> sometime in 2000, early 2010 yep. from you. And you were soliciting me to come out to small town, you know, Mercersburg and to do this crazy, you know, 28 day challenge. How did you being in Mercersburg even come upon this information about me writing a book and, and all that jazz? <laughs> well, um, I was keeping my eye open for something to do for our town because I had always been trying to keep the people healthy with healthy eating. And it was just going every, the health in the area, um, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, just like in the rest of the country was crazy. And I was looking for ideas. And um, the Mercersburg Academy alumni magazine, mm. and as you know, you went there, it did an article on your book. And it said, you know, he taught the firemen in, in Austin how to eat healthily and demos and stuff like that. And I go, oh, wow, you know, that would be great for Mercersburg. We could do a little, you know, how to eat healthily. <laughs> and so I called you. I was so excited that you go, game on. <laughs> it was so rip. But it, it, it was really funny. Um, so I bought your book for a bunch of people in the community. Um, you know, sort of people that wanted to be game changers. And um, we got you out there. And one of our local chefs that I knew, he made a recipe from your, made our meal from your book. And a friend walked in and she goes, Liz, did you know that this book has, there's no dairy, there's no meat, there's no eggs. And I went, oh, <laughs> I thought it was just teaching people, firemen, to be healthy eaters. Right, right. But you know, then I thought, well, my golly, if those firemen could take this on, they loved the food, it tasted great. I said, game on, Mercersburg. And and you know what? It really, really did make a big difference. Um, you do, do you remember when you then came back for the couple of days where we ran around town? and? Oh, and, my gosh. How could I not? Yes. And for anybody that's listening... You know, um, and we'll, I'll be mentioning this a couple of times, but go to, go to um, planstrongmovie.com and, and that's a great place to, is, is that the best place, Jeff, in your opinion, to go? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Planstrongmovie.com and you can see the film and then there's even more stuff after you've watched the film if you want to learn more. Yeah, yeah, but so you know exactly what we're talking about here and we'll, 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 we'll dive into it, Liz. Tell me, Liz, what is your background as a physician? What kind of physician are you? I, so I'm a family physician. Um, in medical school, I really liked all the areas, but like I thought, no, I like the whole picture. So I went into family medicine. And um, I also was really focused on uh, lifestyle changes to, to treat hypertension and diabetes and um, so I, I worked very hard on that and I worked mm. hard on not necessarily having on everybody on medication, but um, it really wasn't until along came the, your, the whole whole foods, plant-based eating that um, one can make a big difference. Um, so that's my, my background. And in the community, I, we were had started working on other areas of health, like building trails, um, walkability, bikeability. We were, we had taken on um, revitalizing a stream. So it was a whole holistic uh, wellness type approach. Yeah. And so how long were you, were you living in Mercersburg and a physician there? Oh, <laughs> let's see. We set up practice in 1980. Wow. So, yeah. so if I'm not mistaken, you and your husband, who's also a physician, right? Were were you? So you were the physicians at the Mercersburg Academy, is that right? Right. right okay. Right. So then you, I don't think I remember ever remember seeing you, but we definitely overlapped there for about two years. Really? I was there from, <laughs> I I was there from eighty to eighty, 
80 and 81, I was there oh, going to well, school. He must have been well behaved and not, you know, <laughs> you get sick. <laughs> no, you know, I, yeah, no, I've, well, That's funny. And even, it, yeah. And even back then I was, I was eating, you know, everything and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Um, yeah. So, but so anyway, so 1980 until how long were you in Mercersburg? Well, just um, a couple of years ago, we retired from, from Mercersburg. Wow. And where are you now? So now I'm in um, Washington State, Ritzville in the high desert, <laughs> and down in Florida. I have I have a daughter in both areas, and my son is in Canada. I know, wow. of course, the grandkids. So <laughs> the grandkids are the real pull. <laughs> Well, so you were, you, I mean, so you were in Mercersburg for a good over 30, probably 35, almost 40 years. Yeah. So, I mean, do you miss it? Um, I still go back. Um, I played in an orchestra there and I go back for their, um, it's a choral and, and really good orchestra. Go back and then I meet up with people and we go visit the trails and see what we've done and keep in touch. Um but I'm always like open to new things. <laughs> no, are, are you still practicing? No, we re, re, re retired. I'm practicing my flute. Is that what you meant? <laughs> <laughs> you did. What, how long ago did you retire? Just um, right, right before COVID hit. What? Yeah, Got yeah it. it's kind of crazy. So let's yeah. go back. Let's go back. Um, so, so Jeff. Do you remember, so Liz, let's backtrack. Liz basically calls me, asks me if I'd be willing to come to Mercersburg and do this 28 day challenge for basically the whole town. And I, you know, you're a very, very good persuader. And so I said, yes, even though I had two young kids, I had all kinds of commitments, but I said, yes. And then I, I was like, you know what? Jeff Nelson just might be interested in tagging along and getting video footage of what we're going to try and accomplish here. And Liz, this is this was your dream as to try and make this blueprint for right. small town Americas all across the country. And it was it was such a beautiful idea on your part. And so Jeff was like, I'm in. And you brought your son, Will. That's so can right. you talk a little That's bit right. about what talk a little bit about what you were thinking about this whole proposal and this whole, you know, kind of cockamamie idea that Liz had? <laughs> yeah. Well, at the time, I recall we were working together already. We we're doing a um preparing to do an intervention in a food bank in Sacramento. And you came in for that weekend when we did that. We brought a bunch of people in where we took people in a food bank and put them on this program and they got incredibly much healthier and uh, we hadn't done that yet but this this came up and so yeah I was absolutely game I remember my son who was how old was he then uh, he's 26 that was 2010 so do the math 13 <laughs> years he, he was 13 I guess yeah and yeah. he and I flew in and of course we stayed with you, Rip, and with Dr. Liz and Dr. Liz's gorgeous country home. It was like a farm and a barn, but it, uh, this beautiful Victorian uh, house. And um, I remember the day we got there, Rip, you just had like the first cut of forks over knives and you showed it to us, you know, wow. that, that night. You had just gotten it or something. So we sat down and watched an early cut which was great. And then we hopped in Dr. Liz's jacuzzi out the side there and we're having until about one in the morning. That's how we ended every night in That's that right. jacuzzi, <laughs> downloading about the day and all the adventures that we went on. Oh my gosh, that yeah, was so fun. Yeah. And what a place she had a horse there and those dogs. My son <laughs> loved, there's one dog, I forget. You still got the dogs, Liz, or that was- Frodo. Frodo yeah, was yeah. Willie's favorite. Frodo, yeah. And uh, so we just had a ball. And I remember, you know, we got in a van, we all drove around and just whipped from one place to the next, uh, grabbing a quick lunch. And uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was. And you, I mean, you would, up to that point, you'd made several different films, hadn't you? Um, well, I mean, that's what I used to do for a living. Yeah. But yeah, so I did... Uh, Process people before that. That was 2008, where I interviewed, you know, mm. your dad and all the different speakers we have, and so on. 
And uh, yeah, I was doing, getting into doing some YouTube stuff here and there. And uh, so, yeah, so this was like a natural when you called up and said, hey, I'm going to this town. You want to come? You want to film it? And it was like, well, absolutely. And so, Liz, to your, to your incredible credit. So Jeff and I arrive. So the film crew and, and Rip arrive. <laughs> and, and, and wouldn't you know it, Liz is like, okay, so this is the schedule. On Tuesday morning at 9.30 a.m., we're going to go meet with Dan Fisher, the CEO of D.L. Martin. Then after that, you're going to go by the, uh, the, 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 bank. The, the local bank. Then we're going uh, to Flannerty's Bar and Grill. And then we're going to the high school. And then you're going to go to Mercersburg and talk to the kids. And then you're going to go talk to the uh, kitchen staff. I mean, you had the most full schedule for me. And I, <laughs> and, and I, and Jeff knows this better than anybody because he was driving me around for every group I would kind of make or I would kind of alter my presentation to kind of fit the needs of who I was talking to, to try and sell this. Cause Liz is like, we're trying to get as many people as possible to take this. No, it was interesting to watch you tailor your presentation for each group. You had sort of the, a similar message each time, but if you were talking to the guys in the shop, you were using, you know, rough language and they're like, yeah, they relate. When you're talking to the kids, you're talking about, uh, you know, funny stuff there and all the pushups yeah. and so on. And so it, it was cool. I wondered, you know, what kind of flack Dr. Liz was getting because we were in the middle of Dairy Town and here Rip was talking to a thousand or whatever, 500 high school students about dairy and the problems. And I'm thinking their parents are like, that's how they're making their living. Liz, did you get uh, any feedback? Yeah. Or? <laughs> at, at, you know, at first, the, everything was really well received and people thought it was like really great. And and then um, I hear, I heard. <laughs> yeah that the dairy council showed up at the high school <laughs> during rip's presentation he had said dairy is bad and apparently the kids went home and they they talked to their pa parents about it and and that area of pennsylvania is is dairy central and and they got upset so they called the dairy council and the dairy council went to the high school and made them do a presentation on dairy and made them put up Equal posters time, all yes. over, <laughs> like Cal Ripken poker, got milk, you know. And right. so it was interesting. And it created a little, um, it, you know, it made something we had to work with over the years in terms of community ruffles. But, uh, you know, it's a reality. Mm -hmm. People people have, um, you know, people do react. <laughs> intensely when, when well, you know talk. i interviewed people when we came back after um you know in the after after people had done it taken the four-week program and had all this success <coughs> excuse me i interviewed a handful of people over at your house liz that came over to talk about their experience and i remember one not everybody made it in the film <clears throat> uh what described herself as a <coughs> excuse me a third generation dairy farmer and right. she was vegan. You know, she was right. somebody who this is their, their family business that they're doing. And it was interesting that she'd been, you know, she'd lost this weight and brought her numbers down. And, you know, she was, she was down for the program. She was committed to it and, and believed in it. Yeah. And I, and it was kind of an interesting cognitive dissonance, you know, for her, I think. It, well, it was really interesting. And she was really, I, she never said to me, oh, it caused a lot of family stress or anything. So I, I, it, it's very interesting that she did. And there was a, um, a wife of a dairy farmer. I think there were a couple of people. I right. never dwelled on it with them, but it was very, I was always curious, oh, how would your family react? But they weren't ostracized from the family, but they did follow through. It was pretty cool. I mean, I think it's what kind of what that guy at D.L. Martin said that you mentioned, Rip, that you can't argue with the numbers, that people can have whatever predisposition they have towards it or whatever uh, opinions and, and so on. But when they get off cholesterol medicine or when their blood pressure goes way down, who can argue with that? You know, you can't like argue against that. So. And that's where, you know, the programmer, Rip going in and, and Liz was the genius of it, was to let people prove it to themselves. You went in, Rip gave them, uh, you know, a very entertaining presentation, fact filled, like a fire hose full of information that was almost too much, but it was compelling and, and uh, you know, really felt 
uh, scientific in, in the information. But once people go home and do it and they they get it, they prove it to themselves. You know, you come back and they think, oh, thank you. Thank you for what you did. It's like, no, you did it. You just yeah. stopped yeah. eating this and started eating this. And now, you know, you're much healthier. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't really do anything except share what we've learned. Yeah, but kind that's, of that's the genius of it is you prove it to people. And when they prove it to themselves, then then they're convinced if they're still a dairy farmer, they don't want high blood pressure. So that's OK. They, they'll just, you know, eat this way to preserve their health. Yeah. The program no. was really, really cool, though, that got that we set up because it was actually a, a four week program. But it started with a kickoff like like rips. That's how we continue to do it. And um, and and then a uh, kitchen makeover. And then every week we met in a potluck and um, people because they had to bring food to the potluck. So that made them kind of do what they needed to do and practice and learn. And they'd bring it and there'd be this whole spread of fabulous food. And they could taste it. They could talk to each other and say, hey, it wasn't that hard to make. And how would you do this? And how are you doing? And they heard from each other how well they were doing. It was like this real community support. It's so much easier to make changes with mm. other people around you making changes. So it was a really it, it worked out really well for them to hear how how the hear the science even behind it and and then to learn how to do it and then to, to I think you cannot out. overestimate the value of the social aspect of it people yeah. getting together eating together sharing food together as you say oh this is really good can you give me the recipe and so on just having other people doing it and especially you know in the, some of these immersion programs people all come to travel to one place and they spend the time together and then they go back and they're all packed living in you know separately but in somewhere like Mercersburg, where, right. you know, it's the same in these churches or food banks where people are seeing each other every week or many yeah. times, there's like a much stronger, uh, you just can't overestimate how powerful that social connection is and eating well, together. And I will say, and this is what I did. So, you know, for my book, The Engine to Diet, <clears throat> I kind of followed my father's recipe. And so with the 64 guinea pigs that I had that agreed to do this for six weeks, the first time we had weekly potlucks, you know, I went over, I went over each one of their food logs every, every day actually to make sure they were doing it correctly. And so Liz, the fact that you, before I came out there and, and we wrangled up, you know, these initial participants to take the, the Mercersburg 28 day challenge, you, you had already like started these weekly potlucks you had tapped different people to be food coaches, yeah. right? Yeah. And so what I love about what you did is that you almost made it impossible for the people that agreed to do it to fail. You, you <laughs> really were setting them up for success, which was really, really brilliant. And speaking of that, so can you remember Jeff or Liz? Because I can't. How many people did we have enrolled in that 28-day challenge? We had 78 people. Wow. We had 78 people and um, yeah, it was amazing. It was incredible. And, and, and Jeff, in, in looking at the film, and I know you just chose about maybe 10 or 12 people, but it's incredible to me how the testimonials are so powerful and so consistent with the weight loss. It's funny the because loss, all those things. Yeah. Because cutting cutting this together, you're right. I had a lot of people. Of course, we fil photographed, filmed that full evening, the graduation evening. So we have basically everybody on stage who came up to get their graduation certificate and told their own story. And um, when I first cut it, that sequence was probably six minutes long or something like that. And to which Sabrina, my wife, when she saw you, this is way too long. This is this is just going on and on. <laughs> and but it's true. I mean, I initially did that because it's so it becomes so apparent how powerful the program has been when you see just person after person telling essentially the same story with whatever their diabetes is gone, their blood pressure is normalized, they'd had a heart attack, now they're you know off their medications and you know on and on. And uh, suddenly their, their bones didn't hurt anymore. Their skin cleared up. And, yeah. uh, you know, as a movie, it would have been overkill to sit there. People like, OK, I get the point. Why are we <laughs> watching this? But in, in real life, it's, it's uh, you know, profound thing to see.
and you know you've seen it again and again. Yeah, All Liz, the Liz, totally, Liz. Let me ask you, as as a physician, what what do you think is going on here at a cellular and molecular level with the body when you take away the meat and the dairy and the processed and refined foods, and you substitute whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and legumes. Well, it's really complex, <laughs> but know. You know, you're putting in what your body needs, the different, the, the phytochemicals and the antioxidants, you're actually putting in the things like you can go, okay, you can look at the Krebs cycle, the body naturally makes make some um, free radicals, that's part of the cycle. So you need antioxidants. Well, if you're not eating them, and um, then you're not going to balance that out. So you have free radicals running around. Or, and, or if you're putting in food that creates reactions like the dairy does and the meat does and creates antibodies, if, if you're putting that in, your body's got a, a mess to deal with. So it's, it's, you've taken out what's causing the issues and you're putting in the foods that your body actually needs to complete its own molecular cycles yeah. and balance. Beautiful. And I think what's at, what's at the foundation of all these chronic Western diseases is a, a word, it's a one word, inflammation. Yeah, right? that's incredible. Yeah. And so there's this inflammatory response when you're eating these kind of, let's just call them weak foods, the meat and the dairy and the yeah. processed refined foods. Whereas when you, when you lean towards the strong foods, they're very anti-inflammatory yeah. and the body loves that. Yeah. So Liz and Jeff, you know, I, I just watched the, the movie again because I had to watch it for the 15th time. <laughs> and, and I wrote down, so amongst those, did you say 78 participants that we had, Liz? Mm -hmm. 78. So we, 78 participants, and I can't remember you know, how many were men and how many were women. I think it was pretty evenly matched. But the average weight loss was 15 pounds. Yeah. Average, was yeah, 15 pounds. And this is like four weeks. I remember one gentleman lost 34 pounds. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the average drop in total cholesterol was 39 milligrams per deciliter. Like, hooray. The average drop in LDL. And Liz, is the LDL the good or the bad cholesterol? <laughs> That's the bad. There you go. It's the lethal, right? It was 32 <laughs> points. And the average drop in triglycerides, which is how much fat's in your blood, was right around 25 uh, points. So, I mean, those are just the numbers that just tell a little bit of the story, right? And then, of course, the other part of the story is all the intangibles, how yeah. clear-minded people are, how much better they're sleeping, as Jeff, as you alluded to, how their yeah, bones better, don't ache. Yeah. Mood, yeah. Energy. Yeah. So yeah. many people started exercising. It was interesting. They took on they felt good and could take on walking, biking, hiking more than they had before. It was really interesting. And you know what else was cool? Do you ever notice how their skin starts to glow? The oh. first the first week they're sort of pasty looking and then within two weeks they're like, they're glowing. It's because you're putting in all the, all those wonderful vitamins that give them your skin glow and everything. The carotene, right. the carotenes and everything. But oh. it's really neat. Yeah, it's incredible. Well, it, it is amazing how many people, and Jeff, you've heard this, Liz, you've heard this, when they start doing this after a month or two, they'll say, I don't know what's going on, but everybody says, you're glowing. You look so much better. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're radiating health. <laughs> and you're bouncing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do. It's really, really interesting. It's, it's yeah. something else. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, I literally just watched it again. And I got to tell you that um, so many of the scenes, Jeff, that you put together and how you put together, put them together are just so, and I know we're overusing this word a little bit, but I just say brilliant. So for example, I'll just give you an example. At uh, Flannery's Bar and Grill, did you ever eat there at all, Liz, when you were at uh, Mercersburg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Adorable little, you know, Irish pub. 
I I gave a talk during lunch, and Jeff, the way you set up the camera angle, you had me, and right behind me, you had maybe a 76-year-old female. And I was just talking about how the artery to the penis is one-fifth the size of <laughs> the, the arteries to the heart and how it's kind of the canary in the coal mine when it comes to heart disease with men. So it's this underperforming penis. And so you've got me talking about this and how, you know, the great thing about going plan strong is, you know, you don't have to take the, the little blue pill, you eat the leafy greens, and now you get the four hour erections and you don't have to call your doctor. And <laughs> this woman, the whole time is just like got the straightest face. And occasionally she's like, smiling oh my <laughs> gosh it is so entertaining <laughs> oh yeah she was into it she was into it she enjoyed that she, she was i didn't feel like the crowd was upset <laughs> and then and then jeff would you describe what happened at the high school with the smokers and athletes and the challenge that i gave them yeah yeah as i recall going in there we uh we had talked about that there was the, a fair number of smokers. I don't know. Am I remembering that right or not? That's how that, that oh, even. It, it, somebody up. told me that 50% of the student body were smokers, and I was appalled. There's yeah. something like that, which is why you mention it when you had that uh, you, a little challenge. You get you were in there and giving them lots of facts and figures, and uh, and they were into it I, for for the most part. I think they were really listening carefully, and then you decided to show them. I think that a guy in here who was whatever you were then, 50 years old or something, uh, who was eating nothing but plants for 30 years could get up on the stage and kick their ass more or less in a, in a push-up contest. But, uh, and that, that's really what happened. And they were into it and the, the place just kind of came alive. It was it went did. up for grabs when, when people, and then someone said, should we take our shirts off? And then the people were shrieking. And then the audience really came alive. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. You definitely connected. And I remember we had two different groups. We had like the, the younger group and then you repeated it and we had the older group and so on. I think that some of the teachers came in for both uh, to, to watch both performances. But uh, yeah, that was that was quite a memorable afternoon. For that sure. was that was. And as we're pulling in, literally like within like eyesight of the high school, is like the second largest dairy farm in Southern Pennsylvania. And, <laughs> and, and so, you know, Liz, wow. I, I totally understand the blowback. And after my presentation, I had at least three guys that came up to me and were basically arguing with me about the benefits of dairy. And, yeah. and they told me that their fathers all worked at the dairy. Uh -huh. um, and so they, they didn't want to believe what I had just a yeah. spouse to them. And that's all. why the Dairy Council showed up the following week <laughs> demanding equal time to put their message out or, or whatever yeah. happened. You know, we yeah. shot so much stuff and I really have to give credit to my son, Willie, yeah. because Willie is a, has gone on to be a video editor, among other things. And um, he's the one who this footage was sitting there and decided I wanted to, you know, see in the last year, let's, let's see what we can make out of this. And I gave it all to him. And then he came back with the first couple of cuts of it. And that's why, because he did that, I was like, okay, there's a film here. We can do this. I mean, he wrote voiceover and really assembled the thing. And that got me excited. And that's when I contacted you, Rip, to say, Hey, look, you know, look what Willie did. Let's, let's finish this thing. And in the process, you know, we shot a huge amount of footage because you went to a lot of places and we didn't really know exactly what was going to happen. So we were shooting. And um, um, as we've gone through and cut it, we've cut it, we've kept cutting it and cutting it and debating how much we need to cut. It's too long. It needs to be shorter and shorter. And some of the, some of the scenes that we took out, which I agree with and understand, but I miss them just because they're, um, you know, had certain messages, things in them that I appreciated and that I thought were were good. And I even I brought a clip I want to show a couple. Oh, of, uh, fantastic. Clips. That would be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And and one of the clips that I just set it up here, what that we took out altogether, we took it out. Actually, we turned it into like 15 seconds of the film. But originally what was in there was a few minutes long, as you're going to see. And this is when Willie and I came to Austin, Texas 
not related to what we did with Dr. Liz in Pennsylvania. We came there to see what you did. And what we found is, my God, these these immersions, these programs that you put on are like first cabin, just first class <laughs> events, both with the caliber of the people that are presenting it, but just how you cover so many bases. So I want to play this scene here so that people can see mm. a little bit, get a little taste for what it's like when you put on one of these events. Can we play that first one? You got Ultimately, it. I left my job as a firefighter and started a company to help large groups of people regain and maintain their lost health. So it was normal a dozen years ago for me to be taking groups of a hundred Whole Food Market team members for a six day medically supervised retreat and to show them how to become plant strong. This particular retreat was in a resort near Austin, Texas. We fed them spectacular plant strong food all week long and our team of experts taught them how to easily improve their diet to become super healthy. Each participant got a series of tests at the beginning and the end of the week, and this was so they could see these improvements. Now, Whole Foods Market invests in this type of intervention because they recognize the benefit of helping employees get off their meds for good and making it so they no longer need bypass or other interventions. This saves Whole Food Market millions of dollars a year. It's a win-win because most employees don't want to have type 2 diabetes or a heart attack or other medical problems that might be plaguing them. The improvements are often dramatic and can happen super quickly. For example, Jackie was diagnosed eight years ago with type 2 diabetes. When I went to the doctor that day, my blood sugar was so off the charts, they thought they would have to rush me to the hospital and they were surprised I wasn't in a coma. My blood sugar has not been normal since I've been on medication. No matter what I did, it never came back to normal. Three days into our Plant Strong immersion, Jackie had a breakthrough. Well, when I checked my blood sugar today, it actually went down to normal. <laughs> Jackie also normalized her blood pressure and was able to get off several meds that she thought that she would be on for the rest of her life. At the end of seven days, we have a graduation where many participants are eager to share their success. As far as I'm concerned, you saved my life and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna save other people's lives too. Thank you so much. When I went to go get my blood drawn and stuff this morning, I lost like six pounds since I've been here. That's like a pound a day. And uh, my blood pressure went down and everything. And I stayed full and I still lost weight. So, I mean, I'm a believer, you know. Managed to uh, decrease my blood pressure. I dropped five pounds. Number three, no insulin for two days. The first day we were doing introductions and I have a feeling for my 50s, I'm gonna do better than my 20s. I just wanna say I truly believe in knowledge is power and I'm internally grateful to the E2 crew for empowering me with the knowledge to go into the kitchen and make the right decisions. And I wanted to get one big rip, rip, hooray if I could from you guys. Rip, rip! Hooray! Thank you very much. Much appreciated. While I was helping companies bring their healthcare system into the future. Uh -huh. So there it is. That was that little three minute clip that we turned into 15 or 20 seconds in the film. But I just was so impressed, Willie and I, when we went with the operation that you put together, Rip. You. You've uh, you came to my event in whatever 2006 and saw it, and then you went and put it on steroids and added <laughs> 30 uh, dimensions to it. And uh, when people go to one of those things, they just get a hell of an experience. Well, that's very nice of you. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, so Liz, are you are you and your husband still plant strong? Are you guys still getting well, after it? Yeah, so Rip, your uh, th that event set yeah. off, you know, twelve years of you know, whole foods, plant based eating events. We we turned them called them healthy eating adventures, but like three times a year. That at the end of the one that you were there, um, the coaches came up and said, "Liz, we've got to keep this going." And so I've had volunteers to, and we 
we ran the program very similarly with the factual presentation, kitchen makeover, and the potlucks. We've been doing it now. Congratulations. That's your real legacy. Yeah, right. <laughs> that we've kept it going. And it's not just Mercersburg. It's all around the county. And we've also done it at um, an Army Depot, uh, Carlisle Army Depot. We've done it at a Harrisburg Senior Center. Yuma, Cal Yuma Arizona did one. So it's very... Um, it's very reproducible and can be done anywhere. But yeah, we are, we've we had <laughs> all these events going for forever since then. And well, it's I think it's so, so cool that you were able to take that. And um, and then because of some of the food coaches were like, hey, we got it. We can't let this just, you know, wither on the vine. Let's And so all over Franklin County, I think in the film, you mentioned that since the first one at Mercersburg in 2010, you've done now 24. Um, yeah. Yep. I mean, at least that many. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's almost like, you know, two, two plus a year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's, I love how reproducible. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed, I interviewed some of the people and they said that thousands of people have been in the surrounding counties and so on that you've spread this out, have been impacted and had, their health dramatically improved. Yeah. So really, one other scene that got pulled for length mm -hmm. from the film was your husband, Dr. Bob, yeah. who was who also you know participated in health in this thing, gets up at one point and talks about the role that Liz has had in in this and other you know health things that she's tried to do for the community. It's a short scene. Why don't we play that second one and hear what Dr. Bob had to I, say? Dr. Liz had the right idea to bring the Plan Strong message to her town. I remember 20 years ago when we'd been in that area about 10 years. Uh, at that point, uh, doctors were still smoking, patients were still smoking in the hospital, everybody was smoking everywhere. And Liz was one of the first people to start the discussion about not smoking in hospitals and how she turned everybody, I don't know what the, correct word is but everybody started getting on board and it took, and it took 20 years to get that straightened out and still people smoke but certainly much fewer than they than did 20 years ago and now we're starting this and I hope that 20 years from now as other people have said our grandchildren and our children will be eating better and as Marlon said we won't have junk food we'll have healthy food or just food and we won't have to separate out what's good and bad but just food so yeah, it'll be interesting 20 years from now to see where this is all gone. And it's so great that you started it in a little town here. So thanks. That is so Aww. absolutely yeah. beautiful. And the music that you chose for that made me just tear up watching that. <laughs> last night, last night, one of the grandkids are over. We pulled out, pulled out tofu. She wanted to make her special sauce, which is soy sauce. And she takes the ginger and she goes like this. And she's only six years old. Wow. <laughs> she does the ginger and the onion. And, the, and then we soak it. And we made this really simple stir fry, of course, no oil, and, and put steamed broccoli in it. And she's totally enjoying it. It was so much fun. And she knows how to do it. It's great. You start them young and... <laughs> Wow! Yeah, it's it's really it's neat, um, and it's been exciting. Did can I pitch in here? So Please. I'm, writing, I'm writing a book about it, or we've written a book. The a chef and I, a chef joined us midway. Um, his his fatty liver went away in less than six months, his gout, his hypertension, his hypercholesterolemia, his obesity, so many things cleared up. Oh, his restless legs. I find that fascinating. Wow. So he's totally on board and creating recipes. So we've taken our results from the past 12 years and written a book about it. And also kind of wrote about what we <laughs> the book's called a conversation between a doctor and a chef, what we didn't learn in medical school and culinary school. Wow. So, yeah. 
so it's kind of a, trying to encourage people to see where it's been, where it's that, you know, what's happened to the health in the country and the foods, trying to encourage doctors, sh chefs, restaurants, manufacturers to kind of help be part of this shift and see what results can happen. So, yeah. So Rick, part of your legacy. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, isn't, isn't that such a smart idea for a book? That is wonderful. That is great. Uh, I mean, I look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the two professions that really should be getting it right. And, yeah. and <laughs> hey, I, I hear that train, baby. Yeah, that's rolling down train. the track. It's the Pacific <laughs> Sunliner, the Surfliner <laughs> going out. All right, all right. <laughs> out my window. But, but yeah, the chefs, if they if they were cooking and, and making these meals as delicious as we know they could, and then physicians, if they would have this as their first line of offense yeah, against exactly. chronic Western disease. I think it's a great idea for a book. When's it going to be out? Well, we are, we've reached to the point of um, reaching out to publishers and agents. And okay. I understand now that's the harder part than <laughs> writing a book. <laughs> but so well, I hope well, so. How long does it take, Rip, once we start reaching out to publishers? How long does that well, take? Well, it's all it's definitely a process and there's lots of different ways of of kind of, you know, dipping your foot in the water when it comes to writing a book, as Jeff knows as well. Um yeah, let's we, let's talk offline about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for for sure. Uh so Jeff, what are you up to right now that's kind of you know got you excited? Anything you want to share with the audience? Um, I'm also working on a book project um, that I can't really talk about, but um, yep. so I've got a couple of book projects. One of them that I'm writing for somebody who's uh, like a famous person, and I'm excited about that one. Good. Um, and then, uh, so I've got I've got a couple of book projects, or what are keeping me busy these days. Okay. Okay, good. And pickleball, pickleball. We really got into pickleball, Sabrina and I, starting in June with the kids. That was right around the time you were here, I think, when it, Rip, when you were here last and you were playing with my daughters. And uh, then they came over and said, oh, you know, mom, dad. So now we, we got the bug. We were in Mexico uh, for July and we played pickleball three times a week. We've been back. We're taking lessons. We're getting serious. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and for people, if you don't know, let me just briefly get you caught up to speed here. So Jeff has, in addition to Will, who went with him to Mercersburg and, and helped with that whole project, you've also got identical twin daughters. I think they're in their late 20s now, right. Nina, Nina and Randa. And they are just two of the most beautiful, sweet women you could ever meet. And they actually came down with some really severe, um, almost what cystic acne in their in their early twenties, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, it was very devastating. They had kind of skated by it all of their teen years, and then when they were about twenty or so, I remember we were Sabrina and I were in Hawaii doing something, and they were getting acne and sending pictures to Sabrina, and uh, they, they, you know did the whole number of going to the dermatologists and trying everything and just about, and uh, nothing worked or would work temporarily. And um, long story short, they, once again, Dr. McDougall to the rescue, he had some articles about acne and they decided to adopt his very low fat uh, program and were able to stop their acne just in a short few months and went on to write a book about it. And the, uh, the clear, the clear skin diet, the clear skin diet. Yeah. How they, they profound they, they did their own little, just, you know, rip, you were such an inspiration and had great suggestions. We did a little pilot study, um, and ended up expanding on the internet, had about 118 people enrolled in that and just fantastic results people got. And then that turned into, as yeah. I say, the clear skin diet book. And today they are coming back. Rand, Rand is coming back from uh well they're both in europe so i'm gonna yeah. go pick one of them up shortly well, but i think it's important important for people to know that nina and randa were lifelong vegans lifelong plant-based but what dr mcdougall had them do was really make sure they weren't doing any of the high fat and processed 
plant-based foods. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. When they, they were, you know, they were desperate they were depressed. They didn't want to go out in public. Their skin, they had such severe problems and they've got pictures that documented that. And uh, yeah, McDougal basically said, you know, it's not enough to be plant-based or vegan. You have to, when you're battling these hormones, you've got to go the extra step. So they had, when they thought back, when they first got this, their major breakout while we were in Hawaii, they were not feeling well and they were just eating nothing but peanut butter toast, you know, yeah. peanut butter on toast and their acne was getting worse and worse and so on. So yeah, they, they uh, really cleaned up um, their act and that was just the best thing that could have happened for them. You know, that's not to say you can't have peanut butter, you can't have avocados, you can't have some oil here and there, but if you're battling acne, no. Yeah. No, those are, those are the things you need to really get on top of. I mean, and overt fats. And when I just, just to illustrate to everybody listening, how hardcore your family was uh, during this time, I came in a, when I'm in LA, when I have the invitation, I always stay at the Nelson's house. <laughs> um, and we see who can stay in the, the cold plunge <laughs> for more <laughs> than right. two minutes. <laughs> but literally, there in the kitchen, they had three Insta pots. One had beans, one had oats, one had rice. And then in a bowl, they had, I'm not exaggerating, probably 40 bananas. And it was just clean, low fat, whole food, plant based living. And Nina and Randa were just knocking it out of the park. And I, I'm just, I'm so proud of what they were able to do and achieve. And writing this book, this was probably now what, eight years ago the book came out? Uh, um, 2016, maybe six years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah six years ago. Yeah, six um, and, and, how, and how many people, especially teenagers are, are suffering from severe acne that causes them suicidal thoughts, deep depression, all these things. And so what, a, what an amazing lifeline that they have, they have cast out to so many people. And so if you know anybody that has acne, I highly recommend that you get this book as a present. Because it will be a lot. I mean, the the key is the empowerment that they had because they felt helpless. And as a parent, you know, you don't you see your kids suffering. They've got acne, and you're thinking, "What can I do? I can, you know, buy all the dermatologists, spend money, but you, no matter the money you throw at it, Mm -hmm. you can't really do anything about it." When they got control of it, but through their diet, and really they they changed their diet, and probably within four or five days, they were really noticing, oh, there's no new breakouts. You know, they're, they're like, because you're very aware when you have acne, I guess, where this one is, where that one is, and so on. But just the power that they had, the, the personal ability to say, I can stop this. I can actually control this is, is a huge thing when you have out of control acne. You know, huge, huge. Yeah. Enormous to have that <clears throat> personal power to stop did it. You, did you want to say something, Liz? Well, I was going to say, we've seen this over the years in our program. And we had we had a gentleman who was in his 60s say, I have never been free of acne. And he and going on whole foods, plant based, low, low fat, well, his acne went away. And if if teenagers show up in the program, I can say and they'll say, is my skin going to clean up? I said, I, I think it's going to. And and we've had I had this woman with seborrhea dermatitis all over. And I kept saying, you've, you've got to do this whole food plant place. She goes, I'm from Wisconsin. I can't give up cheese. And then one year she comes in, it's gone. She said, I gave up the cheese. I went whole food. I mean, it is um, a psoriasis. I, it's amazing. I mean, it is really incredible. And that the book is so powerful to reinforce that, but it, you can, I've seen, sometimes in airports, I see someone with really bad acne. If I find the opportunity, I go, you know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a really yeah. terrible thing to do. Yeah. I know. But, you know it's hard to not share it. You know what they're going through. Yeah. Well, and I know we've, we've kind of gone in a little different direction here <laughs> with, with, with the acne. But Jeff, I can remember when you guys were sitting down, you're writing the book. And I can remember sending you an article or two that I found about some cultures that basically eat, you know, like as, cl- as close to food that's, you know, grown as is as possible. I can't remember where 
this one culture was. And they don't even, I mean, not one pimple on, 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 they just don't have acne in these it cultures. It might have been Papua New Guinea. There's a few mm-hmm. cultures that are acne free that's in South America, in the South Seas. And yeah, yeah and they're eating, um, you know, their, their natural diet is, is like this. It's, um, yeah. you know, just very close to the ground. It's fiber and starch and, you know, not rich food. Well, so many, so many problems are just the richness of the food that people are eating, whether it's obesity, whether it's heart disease, or whatever, you eat a bunch of rich food. It tastes good. Everybody's eating that way, but here come the problems. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of getting the glow, you get the outbreaks yeah. uh, that we were talking about. And, but it's like the three sisters, right? Like in 19, no, in 2005, I um, went to the Copper Canyon in central Mexico and I got to see how the, the Tarahumara Tara, the Tara 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 Indians, oh, and you wow. know, they, you know, they're the running people, these people, they basically do 50, hundred mile runs um, you know, they, and they do it wearing these moccasins made out of tires. I should say sandals made out of tires. Um, and they're still living in caves in the side of the mountain. They walk down to get their water from the stream. And then they, it's called the three sisters. It's basically, it's corn, it's squash and it's beans. And that's the, what they basically their sustenance. Um, so we yeah. and oh, and studied that. the Tarahumara. He was, they were the cornerstone, the 80, 10, 10, you know, 80% carbs, 10% fat, 10% protein. That's where that came from was studying the Tarahumara Indians who of course don't have heart disease in their population. It's virtually non-existent. Right. What was that? As well as it? acne. <laughs> well, do you know how they grow that? It grows really, they grow the corn. So you have this corn stalk to support things and the beans grow up them and the squash helps shades them. Like it's also a, a way that they, it's so cool. And it's called Three Sisters. It's a wonder, it's wonderful. <laughs> it is. So they all support one another, don't they? Yeah. 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 Wow. Just like we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, Liz. So when I was there uh, visiting you in 2010, the mayor was James, I think, Zeger. Yeah. You know, if he, is he still alive? Is he still there? Oh, he passed away a um, couple, two years ago. Yeah. But wasn't he a great supporter? He, he sure was. He was wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and I remember him saying, and it's in, the, it's in the film, he said, Mercersburg doesn't know the word can't. And I love that, that mindset that there's nothing that we can't do. We just have to put our minds to it and we got to figure it out. And, uh, and we'll conquer it. Um, so, yeah, so he was, he was very supportive, had a lot of nice things to say. Um, and even gave me some sort of a proclamation. (laughs) Yeah. We had a, yep. A proclamation for the the month of bringing on health. Yeah. 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 Um, so, well, wait, (laughs) yeah, go ahead. (laughs) Comes in, but somewhere someone mentioned what we're doing or something, but, And so I was hiking, I was trekking in the Himalayas this spring. Oh. (laughs) And, and, you know, I was the oldest person. (laughs) Wow. The other ones were like 20, 30 years younger than me. But it was really cool because I didn't get altitude sickness. When I got up in the morning, I didn't have, you know, sore knees, stiff ankles. I didn't, I didn't have all that stuff. It's like, it's what the your plant power do. So by the end of the, the time, people were going, tell me when your book's going to be out. And, and they were taking on more plant-based and it was, it was, it was neat, but it, it is amazing the difference it makes in how your whole body functions. Every, every you're, you're a walking advertisement for your own program there, Liz. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. You're, Isn't she though? People want to follow you when they see what you're trekking up the mountain there and the Himalayas <laughs> past all the, the dead hikers, right? No. Oh my God. <laughs> Liz, you know what Liz reminds me of? So I am a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. I don't know if you guys are. Right. <laughs> um, and so you've got Gandalf the Great, and then he, he falls into this pit Right. With this, you know, fiery, um, I don't know what kind of, you know, evil spirit this thing was, but he survives it and he comes out and he's now Gandalf the Great. 
and his hair is no longer gray. It is just white as white. Liz, <laughs> you are now Liz the white. You are like, <laughs> but, but with all the power and the wisdom right. and, and the beauty that comes with that. It is, I mean, it's incredible. And when she sees when she sees Derry, she says, "You shall not pass." <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's that's, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Liz, if you haven't seen the Lord of the Rings, I highly recommend it. There's three of them. <laughs> I'll have to pull it out. I think it was a, a ways back, but <laughs> it was. It, yeah. it, it definitely was. Well, you know what, you two, this has been a blast. It's been a blast reconnecting and, and talking about this. Really, Liz, what I think was an experiment that turned out to really, you know, catch hold. Um, it had some legs. You created something literally out of nothing. <clears throat> and and if anybody in the audience is listening, you want to take a deeper dive. Go to planstrongmovie.com. You can check it out. Jeff, how long is it? Roughly 24 minutes. 24 yep. minutes. And it is so, it is entertaining. It is educational. It's inspiring. Uh, and I think you'll get a lot out of it for sure. So Liz, Jeff, you guys, it's so great. Again, after 12 years, I, I wish, I wish as a, a tribute to what's, what we've all been able to accomplish over the yeah. last 12 plus years, we could take <clears throat> a walk back in time and sit in that hot tub for a good <laughs> hour and just kind of decompress and download on life. And look at the stars in the sky. They are so beautiful. Absolutely. They were, they were. Well, any last words from either one of you? Rip, thanks for the, thanks for bringing your energy that just empowered us for years. I mean, it, it really made it a difference, Rip. And thanks for just going game on. <laughs> yeah, and thanks, Rip, for uh, involving Willie and me in this. We had a lot yeah. of fun with it was that. So it was so great that you were there, Jeff. I mean, yeah, it's just great to watch it all come together. You should have videoed the, the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> totally. I think that was before I had an iPhone, so I wasn't taking photos. Otherwise, I would have had that. <laughs> True. Right. Yeah. It was early yeah. days. Of it was phones. early days. <laughs> All right. You guys, love you both. Love what we were able All to right. do together. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Love can you, you give me can you give me a virtual plan strong fist bump on the way out? <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> Liz, a little higher, Liz. A little higher. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> All right. See you. Once again, you can view the film for free at planstrongmovie.com and know that that site is also packed with lots of resources that will allow you to host your own viewing, followed by discussions. There's also recipe guides and a booklet so that you can take the 28-day challenge, just like the one that we did back in Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. If you're interested in learning more about Dr. Elizabeth George and her great work, simply visit healthyeatingadventure.org. Until then, enjoy these valuable tools and resources to help you on your own journey, wherever that may be. Mercersburg welcomed us into their home, and I hope that you will too. Until then, keep it plan strong. Thank you for listening to the Plan Strong Podcast. You can support the show by taking a quick minute to follow us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Leaving us a positive review and sharing the show with your network is another great way to help us reach as many people as possible with the exciting news about plants. Thank you in advance for your support. It means everything. The Plan Strong Podcast team includes Carrie Barrett, Lori Kordowich, Amy Mackey, Patrick Gavin, and Wade Clark. This season is dedicated to all of those courageous truth seekers who weren't afraid to look through the lens with clear vision and hold firm to a higher truth. Most notably, my parents, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. and Anne Cryle Esselstyn. Thanks for listening. <laughs>